there's plenty of pressure behind the scenes in Late Night, so perhaps it's no surprise that Jimmy Kimmel would insult someone who'd become one of the most important people in his life when they first met. From Las Vegas childhood to ABC fixture, here's his lifelong transformation. Jimmy Kimmel was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1967, but when he was just nine, he and his parents and his two siblings moved out west to Las Vegas. While he was growing up, he didn't feel like there was anything out of the ordinary about living in Sin City. In fact, he remembers having an abnormally normal upbringing, with typical experiences like Little League baseball and church offset by the more offbeat aspects of the city. But as he noted to People magazine in 2024, then there's all all this craziness around you. That craziness included seeing Sammy Davis Jr. while clothes shopping and bumping into Liberace at the supermarket, as well as his marching band being hired to play Happy Birthday at Wayne Newton's house. Kimmel really got into comedy when he was a teenager, thanks to David Letterman and his groundbreaking late-night talk show. To describe Kimmel's fandom of Letterman as hardcore would be an understatement. He wore a Late Night with David Letterman jacket and even had a vanity license plate inspired by the show. As he recalled during an episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live in 2015, when Letterman's own time as a late night host was coming to an end, I watched the show every night. I never missed it. And little did I know that many years and many pounds later, that watching the show was a great education for me. When Kimmel started hosting his own talk show in 2003, he reached out to Letterman to be his first guest. Alas, the late-night veteran declined, but Kimmel was ultimately okay with his idol turning him down, as he admitted to The Hollywood Reporter in 2011, I'm glad Letterman wasn't my first guest, because you're already nervous enough doing your first show, but I would have been an absolute basket case. Eventually, though, Letterman would drop by Jimmy Kimmel Live a few times over the years. David I'll, I'll take it and uh, you'll... <laughs> Letterman wasn't the only host to capture young Jimmy Kimmel's imagination, as he also regularly listened to the outrageous radio antics of Howard Stern. As Kimmel revealed to The Hollywood Reporter, my uncle Vinny used to tape him when he was on WNBC in New York and then send me cassettes. And it was actually Stern who inspired Kimmel to become a disc jockey at his college radio station. After graduating, he decided to pursue a radio career. He followed the familiar industry trajectory of moving from one city to another, eventually landing at Los Angeles's K-Rock in 1994, working for the Kevin and Bean Morning Show. The station's higher-ups hired him as a writer, envisioning a behind-the-scenes role for Kimmel. But hosts Kevin Ryder and Gene Bean Baxter wanted him on the air, leading him to become known as Jimmy the Sports Guy. As Baxter told Variety in 2013, we had to fight to get him as an on-air guy. I think Jimmy looked at sports as a way to get comedy on the air. It was a great jumping-off point for him. Kimmel's radio exposure on Kevin and Bean opened the door to TV when he accepted an offer to appear in promos for the Fox network. That gig led to more TV work, including a new quiz show on Comedy Central. As he recalled to Variety, when I heard about Win Ben Stein's money, I thought, okay, that sounds like a good idea. I was the only one who auditioned for that show. Ben Stein's money was definitely the breakthrough. Host Ben Stein remembers things a bit differently, though, claiming that he and the show's producers felt that they didn't need to see anybody else after Kimmel auditioned. As he told Variety, We all knew Jimmy was a genius long before we were on the air. The show debuted in 1997, and Kimmel proved to be a standout sidekick, with his quick-witted wisecrack serving as the perfect counterpoint to Stein's bone-dry delivery. And when ABC was looking to launch a late-night show, Stein recommended Kimmel to Michael Eisner, who was, at the time, the head of ABC parent company Disney. After his stint on Win Ben Stein's Money, Kimmel moved on to another show on Comedy Central. Along with his friend Adam Carolla, he created and co-hosted The Man Show beginning in 1999. The show's title was both ironic and earnest, as it simultaneously celebrated and parodied stereotypical male culture. Despite or perhaps because of its somewhat Neanderthal nature, The Man Show ran for six seasons. Although Kimmel and Carolla left after the fourth, during an appearance on Watch What Happens Live in 2019, Kimmel was asked whether he felt the show would be able to survive in a more politically correct era. I think not only would it be possible, I think it would be more popular than it ever was. Really? Yeah. Even in this Especially outrage. in this world.
Kimmel married his first wife, Gina Maddy, in 1988, but then they split up in 2002, around the same time that his marriage was ending. He began dating comedian Sarah Silverman. They met in 2001 when he hosted a roast of Hugh Hefner. Jimmy Kimmel, everybody. Uh, he's fat and has no charisma. However, they started dating in 2002. Kimmel jokingly praised Silverman when he told People magazine in 2008, Sarah is funny and smart and good to look at. Plus, she likes fat guys. What more could I ask? That year, Kimmel and Silverman split up after five years of dating, although they got back together just a few months later. But then, in March 2009, they broke up once again, this time for good. They've remained on good terms since then, though, with Kimmel lovingly roasting her when she received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2018. As he shared, Sarah and I dated for seven years. She mentioned me in her 300-page autobiography four times. She mentioned farting 13 times. It has always been her first love. After ABC canceled the Bill Maher-hosted Politically Incorrect, the network hired Jimmy Kimmel to host his own late-night talk show. Premiering in 2003, Jimmy Kimmel Live promised to be a program like no other. The host didn't wear a tie, and audience members could even loosen up with a drink or two at a bar in the lobby outside the studio. Alas, that didn't last very long, as ABC shut down the bar after a member of the audience reportedly vomited in the view of a network executive. While looking back on the first night of Jimmy Kimmel Live, the host believes that he had no idea what he was doing. As he admitted to Variety in 2023, I was totally unprepared for the show itself. I had almost no jokes written. It didn't help that the show struggled to book guests in the first few months, and it took Kimmel a while to find his footing as a host. As he recalled, those first few years, I still don't understand why they kept me on the air. It would have made perfect sense to remove me, but thank God they didn't have sense. Since then, Jimmy Kimmel Live has, of course, enjoyed plenty of success, racking up countless viral moments and spawning popular recurring segments like mean tweets and unnecessary censorship. Call the Disney Corporation to try and Jimmy Kimmel. A long-running tradition on Jimmy Kimmel Live involves the host ending an episode with an apologizing to Matt Damon for running out of time. The implication is that Damon is sitting in the show's green room fuming night after night. Of course, it's all part of a gag in which the host and the actor pretend to be each other's arch nemesis. Over the years, Damon has appeared on the show numerous times to perpetuate the feud, including the time that Sarah Silverman sang a rather dirty ditty. You are so bad! <laughs> a little bit. Let's put that guitar down and go Matt Damon. In a 2011 interview with Parade, Damon revealed that Kimmel had been using his name to end the show for more than a year before he actually appeared as a guest. When he met Kimmel for the first time backstage, he asked for an explanation. The host told him that he'd just completed a dull episode lacking in star power, so he joked that Damon, who was the first celebrity who popped into his head, had to be bumped to the next episode, which caused a producer to burst out laughing. So he repeated the bit the next night and then just kept on going with it. Unfortunately, we are totally out of time. <laughs> While Kimmel's feud with Matt Damon might be fake, there was nothing bogus about his anger towards his former late-night colleague Jay Leno. It all stemmed from NBC's botched handling of Conan O'Brien replacing Leno as the host of The Tonight Show. That decision was made back in 2004 when O'Brien was hosting Late Night, which immediately followed The Tonight Show on NBC. The time finally came for the switch to happen in 2009, but Leno stuck around, hosting a new program called The Jay Leno Show at 10 p.m when that show struggled in the ratings. A plan was hatched to move Leno back to 11.35 and have The Tonight Show start at 12.05 a.m. The whole debacle ended up with O'Brien being ousted after just seven months and Leno resuming his stint as Tonight Show host. When Kimmel appeared on Leno's show, Leno asked him to recall his best prank, to which Kimmel responded, I told the guy that Five years from now, I'm going to give you my show. And then when the five years came, I gave it to him, and then I took it back almost instantly. Wow. There was more to the story than just Kimmel sticking up for O'Brien. During an appearance on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast in 2022, Kimmel revealed that Leno had been in serious meetings to launch an 11.30 p.m. show on ABC, which would have become the lead-in for Kimmel's show. The two had numerous discussions, with Kimmel assuming they'd become friends, until Leno announced that he was remaining at NBC without bothering to let Kimmel know. 
Molly McNearney has been on the staff of Jimmy Kimmel Live since the beginning. She was initially hired as a writer's assistant before eventually being promoted to head writer. It wasn't exactly love at first sight between her and her boss, as he actually insulted her when they first met. As she recalled to Glamour in 2014, Jimmy looked up at me and said, That is really stupid. What a waste of time. That was the first and only thing he probably said to me the entire first year of working there. But a few years later, they began dating after Kimmel discovered that the way to McNearney's heart was through her stomach. As she admitted, he cooked for me and that was it. It sealed the deal. They got married in a star-studded ceremony in 2013 and then welcomed their daughter Jane in 2014. Jane became became a big sister in 2017 when their son Billy was born. Kimmel also has a daughter named Kate and a son named Kevin from his first marriage. In 2022, Jimmy Kimmel extended his contract with ABC, signing on for three more years of Jimmy Kimmel Live. With the end of that contract looming, could that mark the end of his late-night career? He told the Los Angeles Times in 2024 that he believes this is his final contract, although he also admitted that he has expressed similar sentiments in the past only to eventually return. This time, though, the timing feels right. As he put it, I still have a little more than two years left on my contract, and that seems pretty good. That seems like enough. There's no escaping the simple fact that producing a one-hour TV show five days a week is a serious grind. However, whenever Kimmel has been away from it, he has found himself missing the action. As he admitted, it's hard to yearn for it when you're doing it. But then I take the summer off or I go on strike and you start going, yeah, I miss the fun stuff.